<laughs> this wee whacker won't stop. <laughs> right outside my window. Ooh. <laughs> What's up? My name is Avery and today is the start of a brand new reading vlog. I decided that I want to start making weekly reading vlogs again. It's been a very, very, very long time since I have done that. I want to try and post two videos a week, one of which is always a reading vlog. It's around three o'clock in the afternoon right now. I had my geography Zoom class. I had to take a history exam, which uh, we'll see what grade I got on that sucker. I plan to start the Moment of Letting Go by J.A. Redmersky. J.A. Redmersky wrote one of my favorite romance books, The Edge of Never, and I have yet to read another book by her. I know she wrote a continuation to The Edge of Never, but it deals with a uh, subject matter that I do not like reading about, so I did not continue on with the series. I believe it's about a girl who lives her life very scheduled, and she takes a trip to Hawaii, I believe, and she meets a surfer named Luke there, and they start up like only hookup relationship, but then it develops into something more and it's gonna probably have to deal with her moving like leaving Hawaii to go back home but they want to have a relationship or something like that we will see I plan to read hopefully 50 pages today my goal every day um, is to read 50 pages I talked about it in my romance takeover buddy read reading vlog but I have a new system back there you can kind of see it if you really want to know the details of it you can go check out that vlog but I set up a new system to where I have sticky notes of all the things I need to complete in the day on this side and then when I'm done I move the sticky note over to this side and by the end of the day I want this all to be cleared behind me and I want this one all to be filled with my completed stuff. It just has random stuff in there like make my bed, type of medication, and then like homework assignments I need to do. I want to read 50 pages a day. I want to try to post a bookstagram picture every day. But anyway, I'm going to go eat something um, and take my book outside and go read while throwing the um, ball to my dogs because I just spent all day studying for a history exam. I took a history exam and I deserve a little de-stressing time. It's a little bit later um, and I am on page 52, 53 of The Moment of Letting Go. I don't think I like this. I don't think I like this. <laughs> That's very disappointing. I think I'm gonna give it maybe 50 more pages. So this book is basically about Sienna. She has to go to Oahu to help coordinate a wedding. Um, and she's only there for like two or three days and when she's on the beach on her first day she meets surfer luke who um is really nice to her and he's really captivated by her and just by looking at her and having one conversation with her she's not like any other girl i've met before but i can't be with her and i can't have a relationship with her because of my horrible troubled past <laughs> like oh <laughs> some of the talking really annoys me you know how someone said might say um yeah see you later like it's spelled y-a see ya later and normally that's text slang and like a lot of people don't actually say it and in the book it's spelled y-a-h so ya see ya later it was really bugging me it's happened a bunch of times so far and then another thing is like there's a perspective of luke in here and so <laughs> You can obviously tell that the author is really trying to dude it up and like <laughs> this J. Aaron Risky I presume is a woman. That's what I presume. Um, let's see. Yep, she's a woman. The Luke parts are really dude like. Like, oh see you later, bro, and <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm just I'm cringing reading some of this. So I might get 50 more pages. We'll see. I don't like DNFing books, but if I'm not having a good time, I guess I might as well DNF it. I normally just DNF books that I'm hating. I'm not hating this necessarily, but like at the rate this is going, if it like ended now, I would give it like two stars, which really sucks because I really like J. Anamirsky's other book, <laughs> which makes me think, did I really like that book? Because I read it so long ago my reading taste changed have I developed more as a reader critically
Hello there everyone, happy Tuesday. I had class this morning and then I had to do a bunch of other things on my computer. I had a bunch of holds on my account at my university. So I had to fix all of that, it was like three different things. I then had to make a worksheet that had all of my classes that I wanna take in the fall. So when registration opens on Thursday, I can just click submit and hopefully all my classes will go through. I'm praying and hoping by the schedule that I have, I won't have to do any Friday classes. The schedule that I made up for my fall courses doesn't have any Friday classes, so I've never not had a Friday class before. So that's what I'm praying for and hoping for. As you can see, there's a ladder behind me because uh, I have to use the ladder now to get on my bed. As you can see, the bed, my bed goes up to here on me. Um, it's a very, very tall bed. So I have to usually use a footstool to get up on my bed, but I cannot use it anymore. It's only for the pets now. I have to use the ladder because I have fallen trying to get on the bed <laughs> twice now <laughs> in a week. And I have injured both of my legs on separate occasions. Um, so you can't really see it on this one because it's been like a week or two, but there was a bruise like this big on my leg it's kind of yellow you can't really tell but I slipped trying to use my footstool that's right there <laughs> I slipped and then I like fell over like, I literally tripped like I fell on a banana peel and then my leg was the first thing that landed on the ground with all my body weight so it was complete bruise it sucked and then I got this lovely one yesterday <laughs> Lenny ripped skin off. <laughs> I was getting on and then this part, it wasn't tucked under the bed. It has to be tucked under the bed or else it falls. But that was out. And so I stepped too far this way. And so it fell forward to where my leg scraped right here and ripped some of my skin off. So that's why Avery is not allowed to use the footstool anymore. I've injured both of my legs now. I can't like sit on my shins or like you put any weight on my shins now because it hurts too bad. And my right leg is about to become purple on top of that because it got bruised as well as getting skin ripped off. So that's lovely. I haven't read anything at all today because I woke up and had class and then I was doing all of that registration stuff and then I immediately started working on a project that's due in two days in my teaching with technology course where we have to make our own pretend classroom website. Um, so that's what I am currently doing and I wanna finish that by the end of the day so I don't have to worry about it for the rest of the week so I can do other things this week because I have a bunch more assignments to do. But I was watching booktube on my TV while I did that. My watch later playlist started getting over 500 videos and like, that gives me so much anxiety. Like, I feel so bad I haven't watched so many people's videos. So I decided to have another playlist. I made another playlist called Watch Today to where I'm setting a goal to watch all of the videos that are posted today. I need to watch them today. And then if I have time, I can go back and watch videos in the Watch Later playlist and hopefully get that one lowered more slowly than my watch today playlist. Well, I have maybe like nine I need to watch today still. I also have to go to my local bookstore to get the book that I pre-ordered. I pre-ordered to have into hoax so I'm gonna go to Blue Willow Bookshop to get that today. But yeah I'm really excited because that's one of my most anticipated reads of the year but I'm also really nervous because Jess from Peace of Books just read it and um she didn't like it. She gave it three stars. So I'm kind of nervous, but we'll see. We'll see what I think of it. Hello everyone, it's later in the day. Please excuse the playing dogs. Behind me is Brie from In Love and Words, her newest video. Please go check it out. I got two books from Blue Willow. We don't have any masks here. We didn't buy any and when we wanted to buy one, they were all out. So we probably have to make our own soon because I think it's a requirement now that everyone has to wear a mask. But I wanted to wear them because I'm higher risk than other people and I shouldn't necessarily be out of the house at all, but I wanted to get out of the house and I was just staying in my car the whole time. So it was fine, but I did wear a bandana <laughs> around my face because I literally had nothing else to wear and we don't know how it would, have, it would affect someone like me with an autoimmune disorder. So we just took some safety precautions and I wore a bandana as my mask. <laughs> it kind of looked like a bank robber, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> it was really cute 
Blue Willow, they decided to put all of the orders for the day out on their little porch on chairs. My bag had my name on it and it had To Have Into Hoax by Martha Waters in there. This is so pretty, so purple. A historical romance that I hopefully will really enjoy. I have really high hopes for it. And then I had to call the store before I went there because I have a multicultural literature children's class that I'm in. Amazon wasn't delivering to my house for a while for books. Like it's not an essential thing. I ordered a book from Blue Willow, a children's book from Blue Willow um, for my read aloud because you have to read aloud a multicultural literature children's book on zoom to like your group that you're in in this class and I ordered one from them like yesterday thinking that it would just be in their bookstore and they could just put it on the porch for me but I didn't know that you like they didn't have it in their store they had to order it so I just called them and was like hey what are some multicultural literature books that you have in your store right now that I can buy right now so I got one that sounded super interesting we have Dreamers by Yui Morales I'm pretty sure this one I believe is about immigration and the artwork is beautiful in here it just looks so stinking cute so i have to fill out a worksheet for this and i have to practice reading it aloud so that has to happen soon i decided to dnf the moment of letting go i got 10 more pages into it and i just was like why am I reading this? Like, why am I reading this? I already know how this story is gonna go. I can predict it. A boy that has a trouble past and a girl who is too uptight, they meet, blah, 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 love story, everything. I already know what's gonna happen. And like the dialogue in here, oh, it was so bad. It was so bad. I'm now left questioning, is the other J.A. Aaron book actually good? Like, I think I might have to reread that one. I read that book such a long time ago and it's been one of my favorites for a very long time. I don't know, I just, I might need to reread it and see what I think about it. I also think that The Edge of Never just has a way better storyline than this one. I, I already know that. Um, this one's just so boring. It's boring. I really didn't like either character. Didn't want to read it. So yeah, <laughs> I decided to pick up Sick Kids in Love by Hannah Moskowitz. This is a young adult contemporary about two kids who are chronically ill and as someone who's chronically ill I cannot wait to read this book this book has been on my radar for such a long time and I'm finally picking it up this one is about a girl who has rheumatoid arthritis and then she meets another chronically ill person she can't even pronounce the illness that he is sick with so I don't know what he's sick with because it's not in the summary I'm really excited for this I can't wait the cover is also just beautiful I haven't been hearing people talk about this book so hopefully I love it so I can recommend it to other people and have other people learn about chronic illnesses and that there needs to be more chronic illness representation out there in the world so I'm very excited about this book and hopefully it lives up to the hype inside my brain <laughs> It's later, I just took Katniss on a walk um, and I listened to an audiobook. I am currently listening to Rookie Move by Serena Bowen on Audible Escape. Um, this was recommended to me by Jen from the Book Refuge, who I will link down below. She was raving about this series and it's a hockey series and I just read Helena Hunting's hockey series so I decided to start this one. This one is already really good. I think I'm around three hours of the way into the nine hour audiobook. So Georgia and this guy were boyfriend and girlfriend in high school. He played hockey, she played tennis, and they were very much in love. The book starts out years later and they're in their 
mid to late 20s. I think it's six years after they graduated. Georgia is now the publicist for the Brooklyn Bruisers, which is a hockey team, and her dad is the new coach. They get a rookie, a new player, which is her high school sweetheart boyfriend, and it's kind of like a second chance romance. I'm really enjoying it so far. The narrators are doing a really great job. Thank you, Jen, for recommending this one to me. I'm really enjoying it so far. And I read around, how many pages? I read to chapter three of Sick Kids in Love, which is page 19. I'm really enjoying this so far. Our main character, girl, she actually writes a column in her school newspaper where she, it's like an advice column, but she asks random people or people she knows just asks people questions to put in the column. Like, what would your last meal be of all time? Or where's your favorite place in New York City? Before every chapter, there is a little thing here where she has her question and then she has random people's answers in here. And it's so cute. I love it. She has like a basketball player, a Broadway performer on here. She has a physician on here. She has someone who died. This book is funny so far. So the um, chronic illness that our male main character has is called Gaucher. Gauche, Gaucher, maybe? I'm not sure. It's an enzyme deficiency causes a certain lipid to build up in the body. He goes to the hospital every 10 days to um, have an IV of something in him. She has to go in for her rheumatoid arthritis to get a treatment for it once a month. So they just met in the lobby and they had a little bit of a banter go back and forth. <laughs> updated anything today and I'm very sorry but uh I kind of had just a, a chill day where I didn't really worry about anything. I just completed some assignments that were easy to do and then I read a large chunk of Sick Kids in Love by Hannah Moskowitz this far of the way through which is on page 72 so I did complete my 50 page goal for the day so that is good. I'm really enjoying this. Something that I am loving in this book is obviously the chronic illness representation. I'm someone that has a chronic illness so I love when I see it represented in books. I do not have the two chronic illnesses that are in this book but I feel like they're so genuine because the way that they're talking about how they feel about their chronic illness is the way that I feel about my chronic illness. There's a part in here where these two are talking. I think it's like their second time meeting and they're talking about how healthy people are way different than sick people. And when they mean what they mean by sick people is like chronically ill people. There are obviously people who are sick and have cancer or have serious illnesses but in this case they're talking about chronic illnesses and how it's invisible and people can't see it these healthy people that are around them in the world think that something is wrong with them and that they need to fix them and like there's something wrong to cause their illness and their pain in that moment this girl woke up one day and was an horrible body pain, which is a side effect to rheumatoid arthritis. A healthy person, by what they're saying, would immediately say, well, what did you do yesterday? How did you get yourself in that position? How did you make yourself that sick? When in actuality, some days you just have bad days. Your illness is an illness. It's not supposed to be fixed like that. You're not supposed to feel good all the time. It's not, you're not supposed to fix it. Other people aren't supposed to fix it. It's always there. Sometimes I feel like this. It doesn't matter if I did or didn't do those things. My body is my body and that's the way it reacts sometimes. And that's what they're talking about in this book and I'm just like, I connect with that so much. <laughs> sometimes I don't feel good and that's okay because that's the way that I feel. Yeah, it sucks and it's not okay that I don't feel good, but like, you don't have to fix me. There's not a root problem making me feel bad. I'm just sick <laughs> or like, I'm just, I have a, I have an illness. There are some things that can trigger you, obviously, in your illness, but what they're saying is that healthy people just don't understand that sometimes you're just sick and that's okay to embrace it and move on. It's okay to be sick sometimes. So I totally feel that <laughs> um, and totally relate to that. I think this is going to be a new all-time favorite, by the way that I'm feeling about this right now. It's also really funny and just cute and I love the author's writing style in this. It's very unique and very funny. These two aren't afraid to joke about their illness which 
I love. I don't I, I don't personally know anyone in my real life who has a chronic illness like myself and so I've never experienced that with someone. Normally it's just people asking me questions and being kind of sensitive to my illness, which is fine. I'm not saying anything's wrong with that, but like it was cool to see someone like making fun of their illness, which I think is pretty funny because <laughs> they're like embracing it and they're making fun of it and that's okay. <laughs> so I'm going to probably read some more of this tonight because I can't wait to dive back in and I will check back in with y'all tomorrow. It's 11 30 and um i finished the book i read the um acknowledgements <laughs> that's what made me cry um i'll read you the last paragraph of the acknowledgements it doesn't spoil anything and thank you always forever thank you to anyone who has ever had to ask how to spell their disease who has ever smiled and nodded when they are asked if they'd try yoga or who has cried over the phone with their insurance company who sat in a doctor's office and wondered if they were losing themselves who has ever lost themselves who has found a community we are here we are here we are here i saw myself a lot in this book um that's a rarity it's a rarity. <laughs> Finally read something that I think someone gets me. You know what I mean? <laughs> this author understands uh, what we go through, obviously. I really, obviously liked this book. Um, I need a good cry. <laughs> um, I need a good cry right now. If you have a chronic illness, I really recommend reading this book because I, I felt seen <laughs> yes my sickness my disease my disability is invisible and some people don't believe that it's true and some p people believe that it's nothing and then it doesn't mean anything and then it's not that serious and it sucks <laughs> it sucks it sucks a lot i feel my character goes through a lot in this book well physically obviously with her sickness but also just like personality wise she has a lot of trauma built in with her relationship with her mother and her father so the way that she treats people and the way that she sees herself is a, like she goes through this huge journey through this book she's very much fo focused on what other people think and what other people think of her and what other people's opinions are and you see her grow throughout the book so there is a point in this book where you're not supposed to like her because of the way that she's treating Sasha and the way that she's treating herself she grows and she realizes who she really is and that she doesn't need other people's approval to live at some point you're not supposed to like the main character and that's okay she is only 16 16 year olds aren't perfect that's the way that they act sometimes is judgmental but then they're also really loving and caring and um she just goes through a journey in this book and um she learns to love herself throughout it and that was beautiful um yeah <laughs> i'm gonna stop now i highly recommend this i want to stop talking about it because i don't want to cry anymore please excuse the giant zit in my face <laughs> um hello everyone happy saturday i did some homework i then took a bunch of my bookstagram pictures for the week i took eight i believe so those will be shown in my next reading vlog and on instagram obviously so i finished rookie move by serena bowen and i really enjoyed it i think i'm gonna give it a four or 4.5 out of five stars i really enjoyed this one um i really liked their second chance romance and i really want to read the rest of the books in the series so i'm gonna see if the other books are an audible escape so thank you so much jen for recommending this series i feel like i'm gonna be in for a whirlwind with how many books are in this series and then while I was listening to that, I worked on my bullet journal. Um, it's been a very long time since I whipped this thing out. I think I worked on it before the, before the year started. Like, 
I was on vacation. Part of my vacation was working on this and I loved doing it. I worked on my March spread because I had not done that yet. So do y'all wanna see like a bullet journal video? I don't know. It's my first time ever doing like a bullet journal. But my March spread is inspired by Steph from Nuff Entertainment. She did, I believe this was her March spread too, or it was her April plan with me maybe. I don't remember, but she did um, a month with plants and like succulents and I was like ooh that is so cute so I decided to do that with my March so this is all the books that I read in March my little spread all of the books and then I have leaves lining here and then I also have some little succulents and cactuses up there this took me <laughs> a while to do I'm like so dumb I always I always forget <laughs> I forget I have my pots you know so like I have my my I don't get blood flow to my hands very easily and so my hands are in a lot of pain right now <laughs> and they're really sore and I need to like crack them every like five minutes Ugh. I didn't write any of the books down in February that I read so I wrote all of those down and then um, what else did I do I had to fill in um, I have a section for all of the books that I haul in the month um, and I didn't write all of the books that I hauled in February and March um, and I have physical books and then I have ebooks there were a lot of free books in March and I have to film that video <laughs> very soon I also put in the April books that I hold April's not even over yet and look how many ebooks I have hauled and all of them were free or like a few of them were on KU the other thing I did I just finished my um Smutathon spread that was literally at the beginning of the year. I forgot to do it. Can you tell that my printer ran out of ink <laughs> and we can't go to the store to go get ink? I'm just watching Peyton Reed's new video. She just posted a book outlet unboxing, so that's what I'm currently watching because I love book outlet unboxings because I cannot currently purchase anything new from book outlet because I'm on a book buying ban because money is tight around here, y'all. <laughs> with everything going on in the world yeah just let me know what y'all put in your bullet journals because like i'd like to know please because <laughs> i don't know all that much about bullet journals it's my first bullet journal and i'm having a lot of fun with it so i don't Hello everyone, it is Sunday, it is Easter, happy Easter if y'all celebrate Easter. Today I've just been hanging out with my family and I actually finished a book that I started a while ago on my iPad, my Kindle app. It's called Getting Lucky by Ellen Mint. Um, I started it around the time of St. Patrick's Day because this is a St. Patrick's Day inspired romance book. This is only like 75 pages so it's a novella. It was actually really cute. I really enjoyed it. My like critique is obviously it was a really 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 short. So maybe like a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I really did enjoy it though. It was really cute. It's about this girl. One day she wakes up and a tree has fallen in her bedroom window and it turns out the guy who's renting the house next door to her accidentally like cut down the tree into her window. That man may or may not be uh, secretly a leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really enjoyed this. I think I got it for free off of Amazon. I don't know if it's still free. Yeah, it was really cute. I really enjoyed it. Um, I just wish it was longer. I don't know how to rate novellas. Does anyone feel the same way? I don't know what I'm supposed to rate novellas. Anyway, I thought I would wrap up this reading vlog. I'm not gonna be reading probably for the rest of the day because I'm gonna be hanging out with family since it's Easter. So first off, I read... How many pages of this? I, I, law, I took out the bookmark. Maybe like 60 pages of... The Moment of Letting Go by J.A. Redmersky. Didn't finish it, obviously. I don't know if I'm ever gonna pick it back up. It does not sound appealing to me anymore. <laughs> I read only 60 pages and I don't think I want this book anymore. Then I obviously read Sick Kids in Love by Hannah Moskowitz. I gave this five out of five stars. I love this book a lot. There you go. And then I listened to Rookie Move by Serena Bowen and I think I gave it four 0.5 out of 5 stars if I'm not mistaken. I really enjoyed that one as well and obviously I just told y'all about getting lucky so I read three books this week so yay. That is the end of this reading vlog. Let me know down below if y'all enjoyed this reading vlog. I'm kind of like editing it differently than other vlogs I've done so let me know if y'all are enjoying that. But anyways thank y'all so so much for watching and I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye! Thank mm -hmm. you.